The 2024 writing season is here, and in this special episode, we're going to be going over the do's and don'ts and what to ask private sellers when purchasing a used motorcycle. My name is Andy, and this is the Brentwood Press Auto Guide. Motorcycles have been an American staple for decades. They are great on gas, you can park them almost anywhere, and they're a great way to explore the open road. According to the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety, Motorcycle registrations in California outpaced the rest of the nation in 2021 with over 952,000 registered road bikes. With so many motorcycles on the road, this also means a lot of motorcycles are being sold privately. You can typically find a lot of used motorcycles for sale through websites and apps like Facebook Marketplace, OfferUp, and CycleTrader. So the bike that I'm riding is a used Yamaha FJ09. It's a 2015 and when I bought it, I had it only had 13,000 miles on it. Uh, for me, it was a diamond in the rough because the seller wanted $6,000 for it. And I thought that was a fair price for being a five-year-old bike at the time. Now I have over 31,000 miles. And one of the big benefits of owning a used motorcycle and especially paying it off or, you know, paying it in full is a lot of the money that I would have used for, let's say, financing it really just goes to maintenance and also accessories. So I could really just focus on making this bike my own. For more insight, I met with our local motorcycle expert. Billy's the owner of Bad Billy Cycles of Brentwood and is a dealer certified motorcycle technician who knows what questions to ask and how to inspect a motorcycle when purchasing from a private seller. Asking some of the basic questions, you'll be able to tell a lot because most people will try to be as truthful as they can about something when they're asked a question. The first question I would ask is, are you the first owner? Second question I would ask is, you know, what, what did you use this bike for? Third question I'd ask is like, when was the last time you took it out for a ride? Uh, have you kept this bike running? And how long has it been sitting? Many of these questions were reliant on honesty. If the owner is honest and has kept records of maintenance and repairs, it's good to ask for those records, putting you in a better position to make an informed decision. Is there any complaints or is there any problems that you've had with the bike? Have you had any runnability issues or have you had any stalls or have you had just any, any annoyances or any reason why you're selling the bike? Outweighing the pros and cons of buying a used motorcycle will vary for each individual, but having an idea of what you want to do with the bike for the next year or two will make a big difference in how much time and money you will want to invest in your motorcycle. So if you want a faster or higher CC bike, you're, you're going to be spending a lot of money up front for a brand new bike. Whereas if you go a little bit older or go used, you can get the bike that you want. And it also is a lot cheaper in insurance if you buy something used versus buying something brand new and having a lien on that bike versus owning it outright. You paid cash and you own this bike. And if you have any damages in the future, uh, it's a lot, a lot easier. The parts are more available. The, the bikes, you know, it's been out for a while. There's, there's other people that have done something to the bike versus a brand new bike, kind of experimental. Um, there's not going to be a whole lot of aftermarket parts out there for that bike. So you, it's going to be a little harder to customize to, to say your riding height or even, you know, your preference. No doubt buying a new bike is exciting knowing you'll have the latest model with fresh parts and features money can buy. But if you're a rider on a budget, you may find it more financially palatable to buy a used motorcycle that fits your riding style for a lower price. Uh, the, the benefit of that is when you're new, you're going to drop a bike and it, it's, I'll, I'll tell you, it's a lot less painful doing it on a bike that may have already been dropped once, or even that, that you're, you know, it, it can take a beating versus a brand new bike. Just one little scratch is even just a bummer. So it's just, it, I, I think it adds a little more confidence too. You're going on a used bike versus a brand new bike. It, it just, it, it, you just have that less less anxiety about you know dropping the bike or even having a little mis mishap. When starting your visual inspection, it's good to approach the bike with an open mind and to know not every motorcycle is going to be perfect. Here are some areas to inspect that can affect rideability. Starting with tires, checking the condition of the tires, such as checking the tread depth, and looking for the expiration date normally indicated by four numbers representing week and year it was manufactured. So sometimes they do it a little different depending on the tire, but this tire they have it um, as part of the, DO, the DOT number. At the end of it, you'll see 1423. So it was in the 14th week of the year 2023. 
inspecting the final drive, which can be your chain and sprocket, a belt drive, or shaft drive. And that's right where I want to be between 30 and 40 millimeters. I can check it with my veneer caliper, get the right feel for it here. About 25, 30 millimeters there. Next, check the front and rear suspension. If you're looking for any leaks, broken seals, bent fork tubes, or cracked springs. One of the general things that I do with part of the inspection is I'll put my hands back here and feel right here. Sometimes I'll, I'll pull the, the bike down in the front, kind of test the front end suspension here. And usually if I do that and we have, you know, leaky forks, we'll have some oil here, some residue. Checking the control surfaces, such as the handlebars, making sure they're not bent, as well as the clutch and throttle cables, making sure that there's proper free play and tension. Now check the hydraulic fluid, motor oil, and coolant. These fluids are important to the operation of a motorcycle. Like brake fluid, make sure I got fluid in there, it looks pretty clear, it doesn't look real dark, amber. Now check up here, the window's on this side. I'll put a flash of light on it, just make sure I can see that I got lots of fluid in there, it's not low. Lastly, you want to check the condition of the frame and subframe. Also check out any electrical components such as the ignition, dash, headlights, and turn signals. Regardless if you're planning on buying a new or used motorcycle, maintenance costs will always play a role in ownership, so it's good to be prepared for the unexpected. Would you say $1,000 is good to keep on hand for parts of labor and transportation? Absolutely. Yeah, I would say $1,000 would be perfect because then you have, a, you know, 500 for parts and then maybe 500 are give or take for, for labor. Now, if you're a new rider in 2024 and you're still not sure what type of riding that you want to do, sometimes going the used bike route will kind of give you a better idea of what bike you want and then just kind of sell the bike again. But going the full commitment to financing a new bike can be very costly and without knowing what type of riding you really want to do for the long term, the bike that you buy may not be the one that you truly want. There are many great reasons to purchase a used motorcycle, such as cheaper insurance, a bike you can learn on that you don't mind dropping, or if you're looking to build out a custom bike, to call your own. Special thanks for Bad Billy Cycles are sponsored for this video. If you're in the Contra Costa County area and are in need of motorcycle repair or service, visit badbillycycles.com. Thanks so much for watching. We hope you found this guide helpful and informative. Please leave a like and comment below on other topics you want to see on our next auto guide video.